So listen, guys, there's nothing planned for today, so I thought we could just do a staring contest. Are you ready? One, two, three. What? Hold on. Apparently, we've got some mail here. Let's see. Oh, it's from Nora. Let's talk about the differences between North, South, East, West, and the Midwest. You know what? That's a really good idea. Thanks, Nora. Actually, Nora did not send me anything, but she did win the vote for this week on Patreon. On Patreon, you get to vote twice each week for two of the videos that I make. And this week, Nora's idea won, so I'm making her video. Become a patron now so you can vote for two of next week's videos, as well as get a lot of other really cool shit. Now to start, we need to understand some American geography. Because often when we talk about American culture and language, we divide the country into two parts, the North and the South. After hearing that, you might expect that the map looks like this. But no, 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 because there is no map, no map that looks like that. Instead, when you hear an American talk about the North and the South, they're imagining the North the United States fighting the South, the Confederates, the Confederacy. If you want another video that explains the American Civil War in more detail, yo, just click right up here. But this geography is already confusing because the North was also made up of some Western states, California, Oregon, and Nevada. As well, in the middle of the country, there were five buffer states. These were neither part of the South or the North. To make it easier, let's divide the United States into four regions. But even with this, subdivision, we still have some confusion. Let's analyze the four parts so you can see exactly what I mean. First, when we talk about the North, I think what we're really imagining in our head as Americans, and you should too, is the Northeast. The Northeast is where massive urbanization occurred much earlier than in other parts of the United States. New York City, Boston, New Jersey, these places. Now let's go a little further west to the Midwest. The Midwest also has some urbanized pockets. Milwaukee and Chicago are great examples, but these larger cities are still surrounded by smaller mid-sized cities and a lot of rural communities. Let's go south to where the population density is a bit lower than the Midwest. You have more rural communities with an even smaller number of large and mid-sized cities. By the way, Florida is in the south, but it really shares nothing in common with the other states in that region. And finally, we have the west. But we should really divide this into two regions, the west coast and the west. The west coast is California, Oregon, and Washington. These are all very urbanized states. The majority of the states in the west are the least urbanized states, very rural. So the main difference between the south Although I do think the southern states have a lot in common with those very rural states in the west, is that there is much more importance to unwritten etiquette and courtesy. In the southern states, and I think in most rural places in general, you are expected to show a lot more of that unwritten etiquette. While in much more urbanized places, that etiquette I think goes away as city life makes everyday interactions less personal. But let's continue. How I've described these regions, some more rural and some more urban, is really what we mean when we say north and south, city folk and country folk. Each region has its own unique identity, and we'll focus more on them in the future. But for now, urban means more liberal, secular, democratic, and city-centric. That's our imaginative understanding of what the North is. While rural means more conservative, religious, Republican, and country-focused. So what about differences in American English? The most general comparison is again Northern and Southern. And for many people, when they meet someone for the first time, based on their accent, they will ask, where are you from in the South? Or where are you from in the North? That's very general. As we investigate more, you'll find that accent is just as, if not more complicated than how we divide the regions of the United States. Because living in a rural or urban area has a big impact on how you speak English. Whether it's rural Michigan in the Northern United States or rural Mississippi in the south. You can often tell if someone grew up in a city, a town, or on a farm based on how they speak. And all over the US, accents are becoming
something much more distinct. So even in a state where I'm from, there are three distinct accents. But if you're learning English, don't worry too much about that. In fact, I made a video a while back, you can watch it here, about why you need to choose a specific accent to study. Vocabulary is one reason. There's a lot of regional words, but especially the vowel differences that I just mentioned. You don't want to be corrected by someone in Alabama, even though you're speaking with a perfect Minnesota accent. If you don't study a specific accent, when someone tries to correct you, you don't know when you're right and when you're wrong. Because people from different regions, especially if you're traveling to different English-speaking countries, will correct you when you are correct. Putting a link in the description for a really fun website you can visit. You'll see a big map of the United States. You can click anywhere and listen to the regional accents from across the country. Use this because there's a lot of northern, southern, and western accents. It's really fun to check it out. Now that you understand these parts, it's going to be much easier to move forward and learn a lot more about American culture and language. And hey, thanks patrons for making these videos possible. You guys rock. People like Nora, who I think is on her 30th degree and only 30 more to go. So keep it up, Nora. While you're still here, let's talk a little bit more about Wisconsin. In, in terms of accents, Wisconsin is unique because there's really three distinct accents or dialects in this state. And one of them we share with parts of Michigan, Minnesota, and North Dakota. This is the Uper accent from the Upper Peninsula. And I'll just say it's not the prettiest. There's a famous SNL sketch about the bears that uses this accent. Sarah Palin, uh, well, she's from Alaska, but she's famous for having this accent. And then finally, there's the show and the movie, Fargo, where you can hear a lot of this accent as well. I'll catch you guys later. You were having sex with a little fella then? That's something that John McCain and I have both been discussing. Is there anything else you can tell me about him? I love John McCain. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah.